normally when we're looking at chemical reactions, we're concerned about what are we starting with and what are we ending with? Maybe a reaction type or how is the change happening? But another thing that we can study is how fast is the change happening? That study is called chemical kinetics or it's dealing with reaction rates. You've probably used and done calculations of rates if you've done a physics class, maybe distance versus time, velocity versus time, even acceleration versus time. Or in math classes, even getting all the way up to calculus, where you start to look at derivatives and integrals as changes in something in terms of something else. Well, here we are focusing on a way to quantify a reaction as being fast or slow. So when we look at reaction rate, it is measured as a decrease in concentration of a reactant or an increase in concentration of a product per unit time. We can also think about it in terms of pressure, volume, mass, sometimes pH or even the color of a solution, but we're really focusing on the amount per volume or concentration over time. It might look like this, where at a given time, we have all of substance A, which might be our reactant, and we can see how quickly it's turning into substance B. As equations, that would be the change in concentration. Those square brackets we'll use all through AP chemistry to mean concentration, specifically molarity, over change in time. So we have a delta in both cases, or looking at... <clears throat> the concentration at the ending time compared to the beginning. And we can do the same by studying a product. As we look at these, we note that I have a negative sign on A and a positive sign on B. That's because we always will define rate as a positive number. So if we're thinking about it in terms of the amount of reactant being consumed, then we would take that negative change to make it positive for our rate, but when we're looking at it in terms of product being produced, it's already positive. As we study rates, it could be an average rate over a long given time. That's what we might look at the most. Well, how fast is it going at the beginning? How fast is it going some other time? Right here, we've got a value that corresponds to that by looking at the starting and ending concentration over 600 seconds. We also might want to look at instantaneous rate. At a certain moment during the reaction, how fast is that happening? Whether it's the first moment, which is the initial rate, or an instantaneous rate at another time. To do the exact math on that, we would either have to do some calculus or find the slope of the line tangent to our concentration. And we'll see how we don't have to do that very often. But very... Um, it's much more helpful for us to know the instantaneous rate because we can see in this one how much the rate is changing. It's not staying a nice constant one. And we see that there's very few times where it is actually at that average rate. But whether we're talking about initial rate, average rate, instantaneous rate, or even maybe a final rate, which is often where the reaction stops, or as we'll see later, reaches equilibrium, we can compare one chemical to another. Just like the A was going down and the B was cre being created here, we can also look at it in terms of stoichiometry. We start our study of AP chemistry with stoichiometry because it connects to every unit that comes after that. The coefficients tell us something about not just how much of one chemical I need to relative to another, but if they are being consumed and created in those different ratios, they're being consumed and created in those rates as well. So a simple reaction of nitrogen and hydrogen to make ammonia, which we'll actually look at later in another context, is one that could be studied. We could think how fast is the ammonia being made how fast is the nitrogen or hydrogen being consumed? And as we see here, I have some fractions that come from the coefficients. So when I look at an overall rate, it is based upon the consumption of something, but we see one third right here because at as quickly, I guess, as one mole of nitrogen goes away, hydrogen goes away three times 
faster. So even though it's a one third here, that's because the change in hydrogen would be three times faster. Three of those go away for each nitrogen. So to get to the same equal value for a rate, I would multiply that change by one third. To get to the same thing for ammonia, we would recognize, yes, it is positive because we're creating it. But for every mole of nitrogen that goes away, I'm able to make two moles of this. It is created twice as fast. So technically, we would define this as the rate, um, excuse me, with coefficients, um, kind of treating it, excuse me, as if we're looking at it in terms of a coefficient of one or the overall reaction. But much more commonly than that, and we'll see this with some examples here and following up later, we want to remember that if I know how fast nitrogen's being consumed, we can know that hydrogen gets consumed three times as fast and nitrogen is produced two times as fast as that is consumed. So the stoichiometry is still very important. It tells how fast something is consumed and made relative to something else. But if I want to know how fast it's going in general, what the instantaneous, initial, or average rate is, it's all based upon experimental data. So maybe more than any other topic, kinetics is a big focus on data and what we can do with that data. So I'll say that again. If we're trying to define a rate in terms of how fast it's going, we need concentration data and time data. We need pressure data or pH data. No matter how we're trying to define our rate, it is only when we have that measurement that we can find the rate and then compare one thing to another.